Welcome to episode 11 of Behind the Membership Season 2. In this episode, I'm talking with Kim Jimenez from The Business Lounge, a membership site for online business owners. Kim has had her membership for nearly two years now, and in this episode, we talk about how she didn't even initially want to create a membership site at all, what changed that, and how starting one has actually transformed her business and life. We also talk about how Kim is using YouTube webinars and trials to attract new members, and why she has both a Facebook group and an on-site forum for her membership community, and how she balances the two. We also delve into work-life balance and burnout, why a successful membership site isn't just about adding more content, and much more besides. I love how hands-on Kim is with her membership, and she shares some fabulous insights with us here. So let's dive in. Welcome to Behind the Membership with Callie Willows. Real people, real stories, real memberships. Today, I'm joined by Kim Jimenez from The Business Lounge. Thank you so much for joining me on the show today, Kim. Thank you so much, Kelly. I feel like, you know, I've been wanting to meet you online for such a long time. I've been such a fan. I am so excited to be here. So thank you for inviting me. It's an honor. Oh, it's great to have you. I'm really looking forward to talking more about your membership. Um, and, and speaking of that, to get us started, why don't you tell us a little bit about the Business Lounge and what it offers and who it's for? Yeah, absolutely. So the Business Lounge is a full-blown mentorship site where we train online business owners on all things marketing and business from getting you know the idea validated for their online business to scaling it so it's kind of uh, an all-encompassing membership where we, we talk about online marketing strategies and business advice and it's really designed for online entrepreneurs so people who are in the trenches building out their online business or maybe just transitioning their local business into the online space so we really cater to authors and coaches consultants uh, course creators people who are just delivering their products programs or services on the internet and want to uh, grow it or scale it. So that's basically what we do. We teach on topics like Facebook advertising and blogging, social media, email marketing, copywriting, um, and then systems and processes, productivity, all of that good stuff. Awesome. I love that. And so do you find most people coming into the membership are kind of in those beginning stages of the business or do you have people coming in at all different stages? You know, it's a good mix. Um, the majority of our members are kind of already past the idea stage. They've been uh, doing their business for one to two years. They already understand kind of like the power of social media and they know that they need to create an email list. And so they just want to take those, you know, basic understandings of platform and then bring it all together so that they have a concise system and they understand, oh, wait, like this is how blogging fits into my overall marketing strategy. And this is how I'm going to use Facebook ads to, you know, just leverage that traffic that I'm already getting. Um, so it's kind of in between um, lots of people in that stage. And then a lot of people who are in the beginning stages where they're just deciding, okay, what is my actual business idea? Refining that concept um, and then building out the different assets that they're going to need in order to launch it into the world. So their website, getting their social media presence, hustling to get the word out there via interviews or guest posting, different traffic revenues, uh, avenues, I should say. And then um, a couple of people who are really advanced um, and are more successful than I am and are just kind of going back through the, the six stages that we've designed for uh, a successful online business and honing in on specific areas where they might see a weakness. So maybe they've already, you know, scaled to six seven figures, some of them, um, and are just now getting back and saying, wait a minute, like something's not, you know, working in the business or we haven't taken the time to set the foundational, uh, elements of the business. And we want to be able to be stronger in the online space. So whether that be really focusing on their advertising and scaling their business, or they need to hire someone, you know, to help out with content or with support, all of that. So it's mostly people who are getting started or are already established. And then a couple of people who are very, very advanced um, and are looking to kind of bridge the gap between what they're already doing really well and what they're kind of weak on right now. Yeah. It sounds like a great mix. 
And so how long's the site been up and running for now? Yes, so it's been a year and seven months, and I'm very proud to say that. At the beginning, we kind of launched it as an experiment because, truth be told, I didn't know um, if a membership would work for my 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 audience in my business. There's already so many membership sites in the business world, as you know, um, and there's people who are way more established than we are, who have far greater audiences and way more influence. And I was really nervous about that aspect. On top of that, um, our audience, I ran a survey and they said, um, we do not want a membership site. I basically asked them, you know, how do you uh, really what is the, the the format that you enjoy in terms of learning? Do you like, you know, one-off webinars? Do you prefer courses? Do you like memberships? And it was pretty much, you know, everyone said no memberships. We like one-off courses or webinars. So I, I went against what I usually teach, which is listen to your people and understand what they want. It was just kind of like an intuition thing where... I just kind of knew that I, I needed to be sharing more than I was. Um, in those beginning uh, stages, I was, I was selling training courses, one-off training courses. And prior to that, I had a service-based business where I was consulting on social media and marketing and, and business strategies. But going through the process of launching a course and learning uh, about those students, kind of understanding, hey, you know, they understand social media. I've given them what they need to thrive there, but now they're asking so many questions about other areas. Like, okay, Kim, I got the social media aspect done, but what about Facebook ads? And what about blogging? And what do I do with my email list now that I have it? Uh, what about sales and copywriting? And how do I create you know, launches and email sequences that actually convert? And I was finding myself coaching these people via email, my students via email, nonstop. I was creating videos for them and answering all those questions. I was like, you know what? I just, I need a place where I can share all the things because they have so many questions about them. Um, and you know, there's a ton more things that happened that just kind of gave me the, the go ahead, uh, to try it out. But yeah, I'm, very long response, very long answer, just to say I'm very, very excited that it worked out in the end. Yeah. So you mentioned there that you kind of run the survey and people weren't keen on a membership and things like that. So first of all, what got you interested in, in doing it as a membership site? And secondly, what made you decide that actually you were going to ch- take that chance and kind of go against what people were telling you that they wanted and, and test that anyway? Sure, sure. So Okay. Initially I launched, um, my one-off courses and the first launch was horrible. I mean, we barely made any sales. It was an epic failure. The kind where you lock yourself in the bathroom and cry the ugly cry and mascara streaming down your face. It was just like (laughs) horrible, but I learned a lot about it. And the second and third launch did better but it wasn't there. Like the revenue wasn't enough for me to say, okay, I feel like I have a solid way of transitioning from a service-based business to the online space and just teaching and training. Um, so it was a lot of hard work to figure that out. And I was like, just confused and trying to figure out what I wanted to do. So my dad was visiting from Puerto Rico and he was so excited that I was selling courses. And he's like, so so show me the business. What are you doing? I was sitting there and telling him, I was like, you know, dad, it's, it's a great course. We we get a lot of great feedback from our students, but it's just not selling the way that I would want it to. And he was like, why don't, why don't you have like a membership site? I was like, what? So my dad is the president of a university. He's in academia. He's not in the online space. He doesn't have a business, but that was just like his first response. And I was like, you know what? That's a pretty good idea. I don't feel like I'm there yet because I don't know that I can, I have enough to say that I could fill up a membership site, but we'll see. And so he's like, no, listen, you need recurring revenue. And I think that this is something that you should look into. So then my husband was talking to me about the same thing. He's like, you know what? I think a membership site would be really good for you. You're already coaching all these people. They're asking so much of, of your time and energy. Why don't you just transition into a membership site? And I was like, no, you know, I, mm, I've been in a lot of membership sites. I don't love them uh, in terms of like what I've experienced. They're, they're 
they're good, but it's not really what I want to do. I feel like maybe, you know, I was selling a course for around $500 and I feel like, oh, I'm just going to diminish the value of what I have to sell. So I was on Pinterest one day, um, because we were transitioning our membership, I was transitioning our membership plugin. I needed something that was better than what we had. And I found one of your guides. So I downloaded it and I thought, oh my gosh, these guys, all they teach is membership. So let me, let me read a little bit more about it. Started reading the blog, listening to the podcast. And then it just kind of hit me like, okay, there's something here. Like I need to look at this a little bit more. Prayed all about it a lot. I'm Christian. And so my faith is really important. And I thought, okay, all signs are pointing in this direction. I need to at least pursue it. And then I started, I don't know if that happens to you where you get an email about like you're, you're focused on one area in your business and you get all of a sudden, all the content you're receiving is about that topic. So I was like, okay, this is not coincidence. I really need to look into this. Joined a member side Academy and like within two, three days was like, this is what I need to do. Um, absolutely convinced that a membership site is for me. Um, went through like your entire training of deciding, you know, is this the right fit for you? I was like, wow, okay. I love doing this. I love having ongoing support. I love creating content consistently. Let's just give it a try. And that's kind of like when I decided, but I was also really tired of launching courses nonstop. I felt like I was on promo mode 24 seven or my business wasn't going to succeed. And that was just not a place that I wanted to be in for the rest of the year. Like even from the beginning, when I launched my one-off courses, I was like, I need to put this on evergreen because it doesn't make sense for me to be launching every couple of months. Like that's exhausting. It, I'm exhausting my audience. I don't want to be that pushy salesperson. Um, so it was kind of like a natural progression. I just didn't really understand the model until I joined member side Academy. And then it was like, okay, I can do this and I know how to do it. So it's really exciting. And from the time, I think from the time I joined the membership, it took four weeks and we launched the business launch. So it was like pretty fast. <laughs> oh, wow. I didn't realize it was that quick, but yeah. yeah, it was. I mean, it was like, we were in a place where I needed to figure out my revenue strategy and I needed to make it happen or I needed to go back to launching online courses. And I was so scared of having to do that. that it was like, we have 30 days and we're going to get it out, whether it's perfect or not. And so we launched with three courses and the rest is history. <laughs> Awesome. That's, that's some great action taking there. And I, I like as well that actually you weren't convinced about the membership model initially and it, you weren't a fan. And then now it's kind of worked out really well for you in the end. Yes. Now I'm obsessed. <laughs> like everything in my life is memberships. So <laughs> I love it. And um, it was so funny. I was talking to my husband the other day and he's like, you know what? This membership model is everywhere. Like Netflix and Hulu. And now we're getting, you know, grocery delivery. Um, and he's like, this is just brilliant. Like why, why isn't everything on membership? <laughs> like I know. So yeah, I think in the future we'll see more of it in like tr the traditional space where like doctors, you know, will skimp on, you know, maybe healthcare and say, Hey, just pay us a fee and come as many times as you need that kind of thing. So that's exciting. Yeah, I definitely think everything's moving more and more towards that kind of membership, subscription, ongoing programs and software. And so you mentioned that you were selling services and courses initially. Are you still offering those or is the membership kind of all you offer now? So the membership is definitely the main kind of bread and butter of the business. It's my focus, my passion It's what I do every single day, but we still do have, um, one-off courses that we sell as well. Um, some are lower tiered, so very basic courses that feed into the membership. And then others are higher level courses that we offer once a year and they close kind of thing. Um, but the main focus is definitely the membership. I did have clients up until a couple months ago, just two clients that I had from the beginning when I first had my business and was just doing high level consulting for them. Um, but that was only taking maybe one or two hours um, a month for me. So I just out of love for them. I was like, you know, we just, I, I want to continue providing the service, but recently, um, got them someone to take on that responsibility. And so now we, we only uh, have the membership and our courses. Awesome. And so what would you say has been your biggest challenge so far then? Do you think when it comes to the membership? Oh my gosh, lots of challenges. 
So not in like, not, not in a bad way, but like the kind of challenges that just force you to grow. You know, I think with having a membership site, it's a two-way street. And I, I kind of love that because the members are there um, because they're getting ongoing value, right? And so it pushes you to think differently, to provide like higher quality content um, and to up your own game nonstop. So for us, um, it's just been, I think one of the biggest challenges I had initially was getting the, getting kind of like over the whole idea that members were going to leave every month and that it wasn't personal and it wasn't a big deal, you know, just people are in different places in their business. Um, and some solutions work and some don't, you know? So for me, it was really, really hard the first couple of months. I think the first six months, oh my gosh, like every time I saw a cancellation, I was like, I'm a failure in life. You know, <laughs> like, like, why, what am I doing wrong? And 90% of the time had nothing to do with the membership and everything to do with what was going on in their lives and in their businesses. Maybe they were, you know, deciding they wanted to shift their business completely or take a break from it, or maybe they were going on vacation. And so it was very, very hard at first to kind of get over that hurdle and not feel like a terrible person <laughs> because I thought I'm not a good marketer. I don't know what I'm doing. Um, but so that was hard to get over. But I think, you know, with time, you just started realizing that, you know, A, you can't control other people's decisions and you cannot control their commitment level. B, you have to do a better job at bringing in people that actually are committed and are ready to take on a program that's intensive because there, you know, we have 22 training courses and we do Q and A's every other week. So there's archives on upon archives. We have one-off training courses, very similar to what you guys have with the quick tips and there's 80, 90 of them. So there, it's a lot of content. Um, our courses are full blown, just like you guys are, you know, it's like, it's a great value. Um, but it takes time to go in those and implement what you're learning. So it was kind of like that transition to, okay, I need to let go and not freak out because I can't control what, what other people, um, you know, do. Um, and then also bring in more people that are committed and are at the right, in the right mind frame or the right mindset to join a membership site. So that was a big challenge. We're still honing in that process. I think like you're never done kind of tweaking that aspect of, of the, of the membership, like the retention aspect and the acquisition aspect. Um, so that has been an ongoing challenge for us now, not as much as in the beginning, it was really hard. Um, and then I think that the second one is just balancing life and the business because it does require a lot um, just the way I've set it up. And, and I, I tell this to my members a lot and to people I meet, like you don't have to have a membership site the way I run a membership site or the way you guys run a membership site, right? There's, you can design it however you want to design it. You don't have to offer courses if you don't want to. And this is something we learn in member site Academy, you know, like you design how, how, uh, I guess present you are in the membership and how much time and energy you dedicate to it. But I chose this path. I love being hands-on all in kind of full time in the membership. I love that. And so balancing my life and my business has been hard. You know, it's been a challenge to where, okay, where is that boundary where I say, stop, you need to chill out. You don't have to, because the first year we put out 18 courses in 12 months and I just went crazy. Like it was like full content creation mode. And I think that's part of the first year in a membership <laughs> site. But at the same time, um, I still have that challenge where I'm constantly having to check myself and be like, okay, Kim, you need to take time to work on your own business. And you also need to take time to, you know, just enjoy life and work on your marriage and your relationship with friends and have have a life. So I'm learning that now this year, really last year was chaotic and crazy. And I think that's why I burnt out, but yeah, those have been the two biggest challenges. Awesome. And yeah, I think what you were saying there about the time element is that definitely takes a lot of, of getting used to when you're starting a model like this. And as you said, to a large extent, you can, you can kind of set how much you want to be involved in the membership. Mm -hmm. But if you are doing it as kind of a full-time project, like you are and like we are there, yeah, there does come that point where you kind of have to 
kind of force yourself to kind of take a step back and take some time away and, and kind of get used to those routines, I think. Absolutely. And I think for me, um, it was like, I felt guilty not being there 24 seven. Um, and what I've come to find, you know, my husband was talking to me about this. He was like, listen, Kim, you have, you're in a, a particular membership where you are, you're doing what you're teaching, right? So like you're teaching other people to have online businesses and run them profitably and sustainably. So you have to lead by example, very similar to where you guys are at as well, where you have a membership about memberships. And so, um, he was like, you know, you need to lead by example. Your members are looking at you and thinking, I have to be on all the time. I have to be on. I have to deliver, you know, tons of value nonstop. And if I take the weekend off or if I shut down at night, I'm being selfish. And so that's not a good example. You're not leading by example. They don't expect you to be on at 2 a.m. in the morning. You have that in your head. So I was like, you know what? You're absolutely right. Like I think to myself in the morning, I wake up and I'm like, I haven't checked the the business lounge, you know, forum yet or the community yet. Oh my gosh. You know, they're waiting for me and they're going to think I'm a bad person. And it's like, no, they have all these other things in their life and in their business that are way more important than, you know, worrying about whether or not you're going to be there. So of course, you know, at least for me, understanding that balance uh, came as a result of wow, I'm actually doing a disservice to my members by just being on constantly. And I think it also drains you and doesn't allow you to show up as the best version of yourself and truly deliver the value that they need. Yeah, I I couldn't agree more with that. It sounds like you've got a very wise husband. (laughs) Yes, for sure. He's amazing. (laughs) And so if they, that's kind of a little bit about the challenge you've had. What's been your favorite thing then? What's made it worth all the time and effort? Just one thing. (laughs) It doesn't have to be just one thing. (laughs) Oh my gosh. There's so many amazing things. Um, I absolutely, I think the, you know, I think it's the, the thing that, that is most, I think most common for, for membership owners is just like the satisfaction that you get from the community and the connection and seeing your students like thrive and succeed and implement what they're learning and win that there is no feeling like that satisfaction that you get when you're able to help someone grow and move forward and make a bigger impact. So for me, that satisfaction is like nothing else. Like, sure, there's times where I'm exhausted and I'm like, oh my gosh, I have to create another course. (laughs) Help me God. But at the same time, you know, it's those moments that, that totally energize you, that make you feel excited and help you push forward with even more enthusiasm and and more grit. So for me, that is the biggest, most important thing is just the relationships I've built with, with my members. You know, I have members who I know their kids' names, their pets' names, where they live, their entire life story. We talk about them in conversation in our daily lives. You know, we'll, we'll be at dinner. <laughs> Chris and I, this happened the other day. And we're like, you know, I wonder where so-and-so lives and how they're doing. We need to reach out to them. And we're like, you know, messaging them on the Facebook group or like, Hey, you know, so-and-so is doing this. I think that's such a great uh, strategy. I'm excited for, to see how it goes. And so just having those relationships is, is incredible. It really grounds you. And, um, I've gotten the awesome privilege of meeting some of our members in, in person. And that has just been incredible. It's just like, Yes, I love that connection. And I think it's been extremely valuable for other areas in our business as well um, because everything that we create is based on our members and their needs and their questions and their challenges and the things that we see every single day. It's great because I get to create content on the YouTube channel and the podcast and the blog that's based off of problems that people are having right now. And I think it makes you that much more relevant. Whereas if you have only one-off courses or only, you know, maybe services, you're not in the trenches as much with as many people. And so you don't get to see those trends and those challenges as much. So we've been able to create one-off courses that are very successful because they are, you know, really grounded in the business lounge and, and they're inspired by our members. So that's kind of where we're at. And, and by the way, our one of courses are also available in the membership. So we always go with membership first. And then if people have the crazy, you know, notion that memberships are not for them, then 
we do offer one of courses, but that's kind of the premise. And I think that that's just amazing to be able to tap into that direct line of feedback and understand where people are at, what their challenges are, and even test and experiment with things inside the membership before you release them publicly has been invaluable to to the business as a whole. Yeah, I love that. And as you said, that ability to really just hone in on what your your members, your audience are needing and, and responding to. Yeah, that's awesome. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, and uh, you mentioned him a couple of times there. So is your husband, Chris, actually involved in the membership with you? Well, that's a, a question I get a lot. No, he's not actually. He has his own business. He he sells online training courses and he does a lot of consulting. Um, he's a business coach. So that's why he coaches me. Um, so yeah, he does his own thing. But when I say we, I really mean the team and I, but he's also a part of the community. So I bring him into the community. He does um, come in there with us during Q&As every other week. And that's something we started doing last year. Out of coincidence, he just decided to sit down next to me while we were doing a Q&A one day and answer questions. And it was just a great dynamic. The members loved it and we've done it ever since together. He enjoys it. I get a lot out of it, just not, it not being a monologue, which is great. <laughs> so um, yeah, he's, he's just very into the community in there answering questions with our members. And that's been a really fun thing to do as a couple, although we have totally different businesses. Yeah, I think that's great. And it, it's great that he can give that support to you both externally from the membership and in a way in the membership as well. That's awesome. For sure. Yeah, it's been great. <laughs> and so you mentioned your team there as well. So how big's the team that you've got? What are they helping you with, with the membership side? Sure. So right now I have, you know, Pearl, who's been my right hand woman and she's our content director, our creative director. Sorry. She handles all the content on all the things that are not necessary for me to do, like, you know, designing social media graphics and getting the blogs up and running and scheduled and uh, uploading videos and making sure I'm staying on task. So all of that good stuff. Um, We just hired a video editor, AJ, who's been amazing taking over our YouTube content and the videos that we create in the membership as well as the podcast. So that's been awesome. Sam has taken over our client support. So she takes care of all the support tickets. And that's been great. And then my brother, Brian, who's our developer and kind of has been with me since the beginning of the business five years ago when I wasn't even offering online training. So that's been really fun. And um, he works on a per project basis. It's not full time, but um, the rest of the members, uh, the rest of the team members are uh, either full time or part time. So that's been really fun. Awesome. So if you've got the team helping with things, what does a typical day or week kind of look like for you when it comes to the membership? Sure. So, um, I have very different days. It's, it's, you know how it is. Like it it might be totally different one day than it, you know, I might decide to run errands in the morning and then come back in the afternoon. But usually, um, you know, wake up in the morning and I'll have my tea and then I'll head to the gym come back, have breakfast, answer a couple questions inside of the community, just check in on the forum and the Facebook group because we kind of have both. Um, And then from there, you know, I'll usually have three big things that I'm working on now. It's been great with the team because I get to focus on just the content creation and the marketing and sales of the business. Whereas before I was kind of doing all the things and it was very distracting. But usually I'll have on a typical day, I'll be recording some kind of content, whether it be a workshop for the business lounge or a podcast episode um, to bring people back into the community. Um, So that's kind of what that looks like. I'll be answering private feedback messages um, from our members as well, where usually I'll create video for them and kind of shoot that. We're experimenting or we'll be experimenting very soon with something that you guys have been doing. And I loved your, I love your, your lab section that you have in member side Academy, where we're going to try recording uh, welcome videos for all of our members individually. So that's going to take, you know, a little bit of my day. So that'll be fun. Um, And then from there, it's just diving into anything from our analytics and our numbers. I check our numbers every single day to see, you know, where are we at with 
we offer trials. So where are we at with our trials? What can we optimize and make better? How can we go in and provide even more value for our members? Just honing in on our retention strategies. Like right now we're redoing all of our welcome, you know, sequence or onboarding sequences to extend past the first month. So we want to go past that like three month mark and then the six month mark in the year. So, um, really diving into that aspect of, of the business. I think it's, it's important to kind of do the front, you know, front facing stuff like the content and, and really engaging with the community, but also paying attention to the back end and looking at our marketing strategies to make sure we stay in business. Because <laughs> that's yeah. kind of important to our members too. <laughs> yeah. Actually making sure that what you're doing is working rather than just carrying on doing it for the sake of it. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I'm glad I'm not the only one that checks the, the numbers and the analytics every day as well. <laughs> I'm kind of obsessed, Kelly. <laughs> I was, yeah, I, I was uh, sharing a story on Instagram about it the, the other day and got tons of messages. People like, what should I check? And you know, I keep it simple, but I, I do, I look at everything every day. Just how much money are we making? Where is it coming from? What's working? What's not working? And that helps us adjust, make, you know, micro adjustments every week, which really helps. Cool. And so shifting gears a little bit then, how are you actually growing the membership and attracting new members? Sure. So two things that have worked really well for us since pretty much the beginning um, has been webinars um, and trials. So our webinars, really, we, we only have two. One is on blogging and the other one's on, on Facebook ads, two of the topics that are the most popular on my blog. And so I, that's kind of how I do everything is, <laughs> okay, what's working already and then do more of it. So uh, webinars have been really good. And those are, you know, just direct webinars into the membership. That's worked very well for us. Facebook ads to just bring that to, you know, the public, um, people who are just not, who don't know about us with some warming up strategies where we show them a video and then retarget them to join the webinar. That's been really, really effective. And then offering uh, kind of introductory courses that then upsell people into the actual membership. So that's worked really well. Sometimes we do it via trial. Sometimes we do it direct depending on the course. We have two, we have three courses right now that are just introductory courses, kind of like those, little wins that we can give people that are going to attract them no matter what stage they are in business. Um, They're around social media, building an email list and creating content. So those courses are, you know, kind of like in their $9. They're very, very inexpensive. Um, And then they upsell them into either the membership as a full paid member, or they get a seven to 10 day trial to test out. And so that's really worked very well. And it's just a model we used before with um, our one-off courses before we had the membership and just kind of transitioned it into the membership. And people seem to really enjoy that just because this space is oversaturated. I think um, just kind of the business world where there's a lot of competition and just giving people a little bit of a taste of, of what they're going to get inside and, and getting them in the website, engaging in the community has really worked for us. So that's kind of how we've um, grown the membership. Awesome. And you, so you mentioned there about using the upsell. Are you upselling them when they first buy the course or are you waiting until they've actually had time to go through the smaller course and then saying, hey, if you like this, there's yeah. more in the membership? Yeah, yeah, that's great. We do both, actually. We're pretty aggressive. <laughs> so the first, um, they get the upsell right away when they purchase and it's either, like I mentioned, either a trial or a full membership and they can say yes or no. And we don't, upsell 17 times. It's just one time. And then, um, we just follow up via email. So once they, they go into the actual course, you know, they go into an onboarding sequence, the courses are very short. So there are about 10 lessons. The lessons are three to five minutes. So it's kind of like designed to be a quick win. We give them additional tools to implement what they learned. And then we say, Hey, by the way, if you enjoyed this course, there are 22 others waiting for you inside the business lounge, check it out. Um, and then click here to enroll. And so the follow up is always to the actual paid membership. And so we might experiment with following up again with a trial, but I feel like if they said no to the trial at the beginning, maybe, I don't know, we'll see. Well, we have to experiment with that, but right now it's just direct. Cool. And so I'm curious as well, because obviously social media is a, a huge part of what you do and what you teach. 
So are you, do you find there's certain platforms that you concentrate on there? Like I know I see a lot of you on, on Instagram, for example, um, yeah. or are you kind of spreading yourself over all the social media channels? So I have a rule and I always tell uh, our members and, and my clients, you never spread yourself too thin. You never want to be everywhere at once. I know that's something that a lot of people say, like a lot of influencers say, and I get that when you're at certain at certain level in your business where you can afford to be everywhere. And that's kind of like where we're at now that we have a team. But in the beginning, you focus in on one to two core social media platforms. And that is it. You don't need to be everywhere because then you're just going to be nowhere, really. You're not going to be consistent. You're going to create subpar content and you're not going to build a following that actually cares about what you have to say. So in the beginning, it was for me, Facebook and YouTube. Those were the main hubs for us. Um, I had already built a decent following on YouTube and a decent following on Facebook. Uh, Not crazy numbers, but enough to where I knew that I had a, a decent relationship with our followers. So YouTube has always been kind of like the main social hub for us, even though it's not really social, it's more of a search engine. Um, we love it and we get tons of members from there. Um, Facebook as well, but now we're expanding a little bit more and that's why you're seeing more of me on Instagram. Um, we're expanding into Instagram. We've always used Pinterest as well for traffic. Um, and those are like the main ones we do Twitter as well, but it's not as much of a focus. So now I'm like, okay, now it's Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram, but we're not, we're not like expanding, you know, more than that for now. Cause we really want to be able to monetize the audience in a authentic way and know that what we're doing on the platform is working rather than just putting up content and seeing what happens. Awesome. And so you mentioned YouTube there and that you get a lot of members from that. So are you, is that quite simply just through having CTAs in your, in your videos? Do you di- leading them directly to the membership through your YouTube videos? Yeah, that's a great question. I actually have ads on my videos. So it's kind of like, you know, I have no shame, shameless plugs. <laughs> um, and yeah, we just have just very similar to, you know, what a regular podcast format would be like for you guys in the podcast at the end, you just let people know that it's sponsored, you know, the podcast is sponsored by the membership. And so that's what we do on the YouTube channel. At the end, the outro is always about the business lounge, whether it's highlighting a course or in general telling people more about it. So that's how they learn about it. But I also mention it, you know, here and there in in the actual video, I'll be like, you know, we're going to be talking about this topic. And if you want to learn more about, you know, the specific strategy, then join us inside the business lounge. We have a full course on it. So that's, that's just the strategy right now. Um, and it's worked fairly well, but the ads specifically, I noticed when we started adding that last year, it made a really big difference because people just didn't know that we had a membership site. And I feel like that's one of the biggest mistakes I made the first year was like, I wasn't telling anyone. We just kind of had it on the website. And then we were putting out all this content and never letting people know, Hey, we're adding a new course. It, we're, we have this awesome stuff here. It was just like, you know, a tab on the website. And so now we're trying to be more, um, I guess, vocal about it. Just telling people that, Hey, we have this awesome, you know, thing that is going to get your results faster. And if you'd like to check it out, here's the link. Awesome. I love that. And so what are you doing once you've got those members in the door? How are you kind of keeping them engaged and and staying as members? Yeah, absolutely. So one of the big things that we added last year that was totally inspired by Member Side Academy, 100% giving you guys credit, is the roadmap. You know, just having a very, very consistent system of how do you start, how do you launch, how do you grow it, how do you, you know, get to the place where you are able to replace your salary or your income from a different stream and then you scale it. So we have a full blown success path um, that really keeps people engaged. So the first thing that they, they do when they join the membership is we really bribe them to get connected and plugged into the community. So I have literally a bribe. It's a challenge inside of, of the membership where they introduce themselves in the forum, they share their goals, they update their profile and they dive into the success path. And they tell me, what stage they're in, you know, whether they're in the validate stage, they're uh, in the launch or the hustle stage or the breakthrough stage or the scale stage, they let me know. And that's the, the first thing that they do. And it has an entire action plan that really 
guides them through the entire process, whether we're linking to courses or blog posts, um, sharing with them inside of the success path, this is how you get to the next step. Um, and then we also have, you know, benchmarks to when they're allowed to move into the next stage, because at the beginning we didn't have that. And so a lot of the members were like, where do I start? You know, and I was having to go in and manually tell people this, these are the courses that you're going to take. This is the order in which you're going to take them. And so now we have a full success path and that's been so helpful. We get so many compliments on it every single day because people need to have a framework. It's what I wish I had when I started my business because I made a lot of mistakes. You know, I started running ads before I could afford to run ads. And it's like people dive into these strategies without having the financial ability to sustain them or the resources to make them work for them. So we've kind of categorized all of those different stages and made it crystal clear in terms of where you're at right now and where to focus on today so that you have digital blinders on because shiny object syndrome is real and we all are trying to get into the latest strategy and I don't want them to get distracted by how much content we have. And that was a real problem that we got tons of feedback on is like, Hey, you have so much amazing things, but I'm just overwhelmed. I don't know where to start. So that's been super helpful for retention because they're kind of growing, you know, with the membership. And then we put out content every single month. Even right now, we kind of scaled back with the courses. We're not putting out one new course every month, but we are putting out new videos every single week. So whether it's, you know, a short training or a workshop, or we're adding new tools like swipe files. And so that's really helped to keep everyone engaged. The third thing I think um, that members kind of, I think they stay for <laughs> is... The community for sure. Um, they love that support, but a layer on top of that is going live on our Facebook group every other week for Q and A. And these sessions sometimes go three hours. So, and they stay and love it, which is crazy to me. But um, our members are super engaged in that aspect, and they also get to see a little bit of the behind, the behind the scenes of our life. And so they're they realize that we're you know, I'm a real person. Husband's a real person. We're doing real things in our businesses. We have real challenges just like they do. And it just becomes very relatable. So they feel that, um, they feel, I guess, close to us enough to where they feel comfortable asking questions and asking for feedback. Because I think that was one of the challenges we had early on was like, people felt guilty asking us questions because they're like, you're so busy. I don't want to bother you. Like, what? <laughs> you joined, you're paying me money. That's the whole idea of the membership, right? But they're so used to memberships in the space where, you know, the actual instructor isn't in the membership at all. They're just there for the community. You know, um, they can't contact the instructor or if they are allowed to, they have a limit on how many questions they can ask. And so from the beginning, we wanted it to be extremely accessible where I'm there every day and you can share anything that you need to. And I try to go above and beyond to coach and mentor our members as much as I possibly can. And that's one of the reasons they've told us they've, they're staying. Awesome. I love that. And yeah, that connection with you just makes so much difference when it comes to that retention, I think, and, and keeping members around. I and really do. I learned that from you, Kelly. You're incredible. Oh my gosh. I don't know how you find the hours <laughs> in the day with so many members. So uh, thank you for leading by example. Oh, well, thank you. Like you, I, I love connecting with our members. So it's, it doesn't feel like it's, it's work. <laughs> right. Yeah, I know. I, I love that. <laughs> I think you need to be that type of person though, if you're going to allow that, that much interaction. Yeah, definitely. And so I'm curious there, you've mentioned a couple of times that you have both a Facebook group and a, a forum for the members. So how do you kind of balance that having both of those? Sure. So, um, you know, going through Member Side Academy and just learning about, okay, how do we want to structure the community? I was sold on the forum for, from day one. I thought, okay, this makes a lot of sense. Um, but I also want to be able to go live with our members. And initially we only had, actually, yeah, we only had the Facebook group. We hadn't, I wanted to use IP board. I tried using, you helped me so much with that. I was trying to using uh, back, uh, not buddy press. And I was like, I don't know about this. So it took like three months um, to install it just give, you know, my brother, Hey, you need to do this. I don't know how to do it. Um, and 
three months in, we launched the forum. We had the Facebook group, which was fine, but I, I needed a place where I could go deeper, you know, like give people more insight. There's only so much you can do in a Facebook group um, with the tools that you have right now. And so having the forum, we got a ton of pushback at the beginning. People did not want the forum. They wanted to be where they were at, hanging out in the Facebook group. I had so many conversations about it, just letting people know, hey, try it. You know, I can be so much more responsive there and give you way more feedback. And now those people who like, were pushing back at the beginning are avid forum users. So it's weird because we do have two communities in essence, um, but members use both of them. So our forum is where they go to really go in depth with, with the feedback that they receive, ask questions. And a lot of the members don't want to be on Facebook groups, which was very surprising to me. They just, they don't want to be on Facebook period. And they appreciate that we have a forum in the actual site, a community there. So that's the main community. That's where, you know, we answer questions every single day and I can go in there and break down, you know, five paragraphs worth of information and give them very specific advice and next steps. And then the Facebook group is there for quick conversations. So I do weekly check-ins with the members to see where they're at. They share their wins, some challenges. Sometimes they ask quick questions. Um, and then we go live on, um, sometimes we go live more than, you know, for our Q and A's, I'll just go live for a minute and, and share something with them. And they appreciate that. It's kind of like that quick and fast touch point. And then also we get to post news and updates where a lot of our members were missing out on a lot of the new stuff because they weren't opening their email. Now we get to connect with them via Facebook and in the group and share what's new and that we added a new course and I get to tag them and let them know. So it's, it's kind of a, a interesting dynamic, but we do have both and they work very well together, which I thought at some point I needed to close the group because, you know, the forum would suffer, but it's actually been a really nice dichotomy. Oh, it's great that you've got that balance there. Yeah, definitely. And do you have a free Facebook group as well? I do have a free Facebook group as well. Yeah. So that's been really fun. Um, we launched that last year and it hasn't been a major focus in the business. It's just people were kind of clamoring for it. So we created something where we could connect them. And um, my creative director, Pearl, she's kind of the community manager and she handles that. I'm looking forward to being more active on there. But um, for right now, it's not a huge strategy in the business. It definitely helps to build the relationships and move people forward. But we could be doing a much better job than we are. I have to admit that. But I mean, it, it, for you, the priority is your paid members and your paid community. For sure. Right. So that has definitely been the focus. And I think prior to kind of having a team that can take on other tasks, I was just overwhelmed with the amount of, of posts that I was already answering inside the community, not mentioning social media um, or email. So it was like, I didn't, I felt like you know, four or five hours of my day were just going into answering questions and I couldn't get anything else done. So now that I have more time, I'm being a little bit more active, a little bit more active, a little bit more active, but for sure, always our paid members come first, no matter what, that's where I'm going to always spend the majority of my time. Yeah. So overall then, what impact would you say that having the memberships actually had for you, both in terms of your life, your business? Huge. Like, astronomical because I, I was struggling before I had a membership site in terms of, Oh my gosh, I want to transition into this new model, but uh, selling one of courses is just not doing it for me. You know, like I'm sure there's a, not that I'm sure I know there's people that are super successful doing that. Um, and they embrace the, you know, kind of launching a couple of times a year model. But for me, it just didn't drive with my personality. I, I'm a natural giver and I love to give stuff away and be, you know, in contact with my, with my members and my students. And so having the membership gave us the financial stability to be able to then focus in on, okay, what are some of the other offers that we want to create just out of me because people are asking for something else where, you know, I feel like sometimes selling a membership can be harder in some niches and some spaces for us 
like I mentioned, our audience doesn't want a membership. So we had to get creative with getting smaller courses and introducing them into the membership space. They've gotten burned in other places. They've had bad experiences and I don't blame them. I've had them myself. So we've had to kind of take a step back and look at at that aspect of the business as well. But in terms of grounding our business and growing it financially, it's been crazy positive in that sense. Um, everything we do feeds off of the the membership and it's, it's the core of our business. It changed the game for us. It helped us scale to multiple six figures. And I would have never been able to do that without a membership that allowed me the mental headspace to not be on promo mode 24 seven. Like I started feeling like a robot and I started resenting myself. I'm like, if I resent this, the people on my email list need to be like, stop, we don't want to buy this thing anymore. And so um, it just feels really nice to not have to stress every single day and think about where are my sales going to come from today? Where are we going to make money today? You know, that space was very negative for me because it was extremely stressful. And I don't think that you can put out the best work when you're constantly bogged down by financial pressure. So the membership came right on time for us and it made a huge impact, not just psychologically for me, you know, and being able to um, grow the business, but, but also in terms of putting out our best work and challenging ourselves to every single day provide value. So it's made a huge impact. I can't, I can't, you know, deny it in any other way. Like I love I love having it. And without it, I don't think that we would be where we're at. Awesome. I love that. And so is there anything that you wish you'd known earlier or that if you were going back and starting again, you would do differently? Yes. So many things. (laughs) One of the biggest things I think um, would probably be having too much pressure on myself to get everything launched perfectly. So I think for that first 30 days, I kind of just slaved nonstop, like building the actual website. You know, I built it myself. I designed all the graphics myself, branded it, logo, everything, you know, the videos, shot three courses in a month. Um, And it was a lot. And for the next, like, I think the first six months to a year, I just put on so much pressure for it to be absolutely perfect that I think I missed out on just being real and having connections with my members and being okay to admit some of my shortcomings and my flaws. Um, so that came with time and awareness, just being able to tell our members and being open with them, like, Hey, we screwed up. I'm so sorry that this page isn't working the way it's supposed to, or, Hey, we're taking a step back. We already have 18 courses. It's time for us to not put out a new course every single month. Um, a, because I think we're overwhelming you and distracting you from what you need to be implementing right now. And B, because it's just too much. I want to be able to provide more feedback and have more one-on-ones with our members. And I can't do that if I'm putting out two courses plus four to six training videos and two live Q and A's every single month. So, um, just taking the pressure off a little bit. Um, and I, I think I, I struggle with that because I am a perfectionist to a point, And then I also love what I do. So I would, you know, find myself at three, four o'clock, four AM in the morning, not sleeping to get something out. And it's like, why? You know, like I don't, I didn't have to do that. I didn't have weekends. I didn't have nights. I was like all in on the membership 24 seven and it led to burnout. And I, I just, I could have served my members in much bigger ways if I would have just had the awareness to step back and say, no, there have to be boundaries here. We need to be offering them what they need and not necessarily what I want to put out. So, um, that has been, I think the biggest thing that I wish I maybe not necessarily would have known, but would have told myself, you know, if I could look back, I would say, you know, younger Kim, don't do it. It's not worth it. And it's not serving anyone, which is the big thing, which was frustrating at the end. I'm like, why am I, why am I doing this? It's not, it's not productive. So uh, taking the pressure off, not, not, making sure everything was perfect. And I, I'm scared to say that sometimes because I think that there's a lot of, of membership sites 
sometimes in the business space that are a little mediocre. And I am not an advocate for putting out crap, you know, and piecing together free content that maybe you shot on a webinar and then a following lesson is a blog post. And that's all that it is. I, I'm definitely a huge proponent for, for having premium content, but less is more. And I guess that's what I'm getting at. You know, if you can put out higher quality stuff that really helps your members, you don't have to make it absolutely perfect or put it out as frequently as you think you need to in order for them not to cancel. And so making that switch was huge for me because I was terrified. I thought the minute I don't put out a new course, members are going to leave. They're going to flock. And it was the opposite. Like we grew the membership because I had the mental space to put out higher quality content and focus on other areas that didn't necessarily involve, you know, creating more and more and more every day. And so just to, to kind of wrap that up, when you made that change and you kind of took that step back and you kind of reduced a little bit what you were offering so that you could actually give a, a better service overall, mm -hmm. did you have any kickback from members on that or, or were they kind of all like, yeah, no, that sounds great? You know, we did not. <laughs> it was kind of crazy. I expected at least two to three people to be like, oh, well, I'm out since you're not going to put out new content. But that was not at all the um, kind of response we had. And I think it was because our courses were already so in depth that members were already like they had the next six months of content planned out in their head, you know, plus they had the success path. So they were already working on certain strategies and they either were not even paying attention to the new courses or were okay with them being delayed because they'd be like, Hey, that makes sense. You know, we don't, you are the, the expert we're deferring to you you know, you know, what, what we need. And that was like such an incredible validating moment for me because I was like, okay, I've gained their trust enough to where they know that I'm not going to let them down and I'm not trying to be lazy. Um, it's just not serving anyone. And so that was amazing moment. Like I cried and everything, <laughs> like this whole dramatic, dramatic time. Um, but yeah, I, I didn't have that lashback. And I think that it's, it's all about how you structure your membership because some memberships, that's how they're designed. You know, if, if you're designed to put out small bits of content every week and then you stop doing that, then members already have an expectation, you know, but at least for us, we'd already put in so much work into creating very effective practical courses that were meaty, but also very actionable. They had, you know, a to-do list, that they had it covered. They didn't need to be learning more things, which was nice. Um, and yeah, so we, we didn't have any pushback surprisingly. <laughs> I love that. And so as we wrap up then, what's next for the membership? How would you like the business lounge to, to look in another 12 months? Yeah, so we have some pretty big goals. Um, I think that the main focus right now is just figuring out how we can make more our content even more fun to actually implement so adding a layer of gam gamification is definitely the next kind of project for us giving members more perks and more bribes to encourage them to implement and reach their milestones and their goals should be really interesting to test out um, i already have some cool ideas but we haven't began the process yet, so we're looking forward to doing that around quarter three of this year. And then for sure, just building on the practical step-by-step -step courses, but doing it in a more strategic way where we're actually trying to have as short of a lesson as possible and have it be very impactful. I tend to ramble on too much. I talk too much as you guys can see from this interview. And sometimes like I need to be way more precise so that our members are getting in and getting out and implementing what they need to implement. So that's a really big um, kind of focus for us this year is just be more strategic about the courses that we come out with um, and the format of the courses so that they're easy to consume and really help our members um, implement fast. And then the next thing is just creating more niche content within the membership. So we do definitely have a big mix, even though we're 
sort of niche in terms of like, it's only for online business owners, not for traditional business owners. But within that, we have several groups. We have our e-commerce group and we also have, you know, our authors and writers and we have our bloggers and our course creators and our service providers. And so we just started a new series um, last month where we're creating kind of like a 101 uh, program for those individual niches and saying, this is for e-commerce providers. This is how you're going to be implementing all the rest of the courses that we have in the business lounge for your individual business model. So talking about shops and tools and, you know, content strategies and traffic sources only for e-commerce providers. And so we're going to be putting out that content for the rest of our pseudo little niches inside the business lounge so that they feel like they are supported and they're understood. That sounds great. Yeah, I love that idea. Um, So if somebody wants to check out the site, then where's the best place for them to do that? Sure. They can go over to my main website, which is KimberlyAnnHimenez.com, or they can go directly to jointhebelounge.com and they'll get access to the enrollment page. Awesome. And I have to say to any listeners that are in the online business world or looking to start an online business that Kim has an awesome free, I think it's called the Success Roadmap that you you give away on the site. And it's a really beautifully done Oh, uh, if anybody's looking for a you. plan. <laughs> yes, yeah, so you can access it for free. It's a cheat sheet um, and it'll kind of walk you through the six stages of a successful business and tell you what you need to be working on right now so that you can put those digital blinders on, like I call them, and not get stuck into shiny object. Work on what matters and what's going to push your business forward today. Yeah, shiny object syndrome is definitely, <laughs> definitely <laughs> no. a, a thing. Yeah, the bane of our existence, right? Yeah, definitely. (laughs) Um, Well, awesome. Thank you so much for joining me today, Kim. It's been great talking with you. I love hearing about your membership and everything that you're doing. Um, The Business Lounge is absolutely beautiful. It's a a lovely site. And yeah, it's been great talking with you and I really appreciate you, you talking to us. Oh, thank you so much, Callie. I feel like I feel like I'm moving up in the world now that I'm on on the <laughs> podcast. So, thank you so much for having me. It's been an honor. You and Mike have made such a huge impact in my own business. I talk about you guys all the time inside the Business Lounge. So thank you guys so much for creating an incredible resource. I joke about this, but I'm serious. I'm a member for life, <laughs> so I cannot recommend the membership site. Um, enough, really, because seriously, if you're even thinking, even exploring the idea of having a membership, it's like a must have resource. Like do not attempt to build a membership site without going through the program. It's going to literally take you step by step. And I don't care if this sounds like an ad spot. They're not paying me to say this. I seriously believe that it's an incredible resource. I use it every day in my business, even if, you know, I'm not totally in the community every day. We go through the courses. I share the ideas with my team and it's just invaluable. So thank you so much for creating such an incredible resource that's making a real tangible impact in the world. Oh, well, thank you for that. I really appreciate that. And it's been great watching your progress and I'm really excited to see the business lounge grow even further. (laughs) Thank you. Learning from the best here. Thank you so much, Kim, for sharing your membership journey with us. I love that the Business Lounge membership has become such a passion and core focus for Kim and has helped her achieve a multi six-figure business in less than two years. As mentioned in the episode, one of the great things Kim does with her membership is has a roadmap that guides her members through what they need to learn and keeps them on track. And if you have an online business, then I encourage you to check out the free version of this that Kim offers at her website, kimjimenez.com. You'll find all of Kim's links as well as the show notes and transcription from this episode over at themembershipguys.com slash btm21. And as always, I'd love to hear your takeaways from this episode over in the free membership mastermind Facebook group at talkmemberships.com. Thank you once again to Kim for joining me in this episode and thank you for listening. I'll be back next week with the final episode of season two. So keep an eye out for that. If you've enjoyed today's episode of Behind the Membership, we invite you to check out the membersiteacademy.com. The Membersite Academy is the essential resource 
for anyone at any stage of starting, growing, and running a membership website. So whether you're still figuring out what your idea is going to be, or whether your website is already up and running, and you're just looking for ways to grow it and attract new members, then the Member Site Academy can help you to get to the next level. With our extensive course library, monthly training, exclusive member-only discount perks and tools, and a supportive, active community to help you along the way with feedback, encouragement, and advice, the Member Site Academy is the perfect place to be for anyone looking to start, manage, and grow a successful membership website. So check it out at membersiteacademy.com.